A couple of senators who want to ask some questions, so I'll flick to Senator Fawcett and Senator Robertson come over this side. Morning. No, good morning. I can just how good I'm going. It will be soon. Sorry. Good afternoon. I'm sorry I won't be asking for an opening statement, Ms. Speech. So, question, Senator Fawcett. Thank you, Chair. It's a great example that when I'm finished, I can get a supplementary set of questions, just like Senator McKenzie did. Thank you for that precedent. Uh, Ms. Spence, welcome. Again, you've probably uh, no prizes for guessing what I want to ask about. Um, you would be aware I've been cc'd in to the long string of emails that have flown between CASA and the Colour Vision Deficient Pilots Association since our last estimates hearing. It has raised a number of questions that I'd just like to try and get some clarity on. Um, Dr Manderson, in the last estimates, uh, talked about the fact that uh, there was concern about a lack of consistent standards across the board. Could I also ask, for the CASA Flight Examiner's Handbook, is there a revision control on that that actually um, controls the information that's put out to flight examiners across the country? Uh, Senator Pip Spence, uh, CEO and Director of Aviation Safety of CASA. Yeah, we do have a control document system that would um, ensure that updates to the Flight Examiner Handbook are controlled. Okay, so it was pointed out by the Colour Vision Deficient Pilots Association before your review took place that there was no section in that book for the operational test which your predecessor had implemented in February of 2020. Uh, why was their advice, in fact, their offer to even draft that for you not taken up? Uh, Senator, we're actually working through that now. I can't answer why the offer wasn't taken up at the time, but what I can say is we see that there's a very that the sensible way is to get that more detailed advice and guidance on how to operate, how to, how to actually take forward that test, because clearly that not being there created a significant issue in the way different examiners were. Um, applying the, the tests and the information that was coming through to us. Okay, can I ask in comparison, does the <clears throat> DAMI handbook um, for your aviation medical examiners, is it presented in a PDF type form with a revision control in the same way the flight operations book is? Um, we've introduced a clearer requirement around document control okay, for the DAMI that's handbook. That's not quite the answer. No, I know, Senator. Tell me. Has it to date been a consolidated book with revision control? I'll pass on to you. Senator Andreas Machuli, the Executive Manager for the Stakeholder Engagement Division, which includes uh, AVMED. Um, my understanding is that the document is available as a PDF. We publish it on our website as um, web pages for ease of uh, review. But my understanding, uh, which I can confirm, is that you can request a PDF copy and a PDF copy is available. Okay, that's again not the answer to my question with respect. The revision control, because even in our brief interaction in the last estimates, uh, there were clearly updates on websites which you all said yeah. were not your policy, should not have been there, and they've now been removed. Mm -hmm. But I'm not aware of seeing any record of insertions, deletions, corrections. There is no revision control that oh. I can perceive. And Senator, I think you could. You're correct. We, I can't say that there's never been anything, but what we have discovered is it doesn't follow. The, it hasn't recently, at least, followed the same processes that we have for our control documents. So that's a matter that Ms. Mr. Marcelli has corrected. Okay. So I'm a little confused then, in that <clears throat> where we have, um, how many damies are there in Australia? Oh, 800, give or take. 800. Thank yeah. you. How many instructors were there who were doing the operational flight tests for colour vision deficient pilots? I think around about the 25 mark. I think there were around 20 authorised. How many actually conducted them? Uh, I'd have to look that up. But I think you'll find it's less than 10. That sounds about right, yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> with the comments in last estimates uh, about the degree of confusion about the operational test and that the lack of standardisation was leading to all that confusion and there were only eight people doing it, um, what efforts were made to take up the Colour Vision Deficient Pilots Association draft to actually provide the standardisation rather than just scrapping or suspending the whole test and disadvantaging 
a whole cohort of pilots within Australia? Well, I think, Senator, we've, we've been through this before. We did genuinely think that there was a, an issue that had to be addressed, and that's why the review was undertaken. Um, I, I don't know what conversations led to not picking up the suggested um, manual that I think um, one of the, the chair of the Pilots Association came back to us with, but we are now looking to how do we provide that guidance. And even if there are only eight who are doing it, I think the sensible thing is to have processes in place that anyone who wished to was able to. So that's the place that we would like to, to get to. Sure. But my point is, if you're happy to have how many, 800 doctors working uh, to a manner that they deem is appropriate, even though it may or may not be up to date and accurate because you don't have revision control, you haven't suspended all aviation medicals, but Sen you've opted to do that in a case where there are eight people, and I it was a process that is built on the US and the New Zealand process. I, I just see a big difference there, well, and I'm, I'm wanting to draw you back to the comment that your original intent was to strengthen the test and standardise. Are you aware of the FOI document that was uh, dated 17th of December 2021? That's when it was drafted. The internal discussion brief to CASA about OCVA and colour vision deficiency risk assessment? Um, I don't have it in front of me, Senator, no. Okay, well, I'm happy to make a copy available to you. Uh, but are you aware of it? It's a question, yes. I'm sorry, it's um, quarter past ten at night, and I really can't recall it at the moment, but I can check with my colleague if he's aware of it. I'm not specifically aware of the document you're referring to. I know there was documents released under FOI, but yeah. which, which one? Um, well, one it's, it's quite at. significant because what the committee was told in October last year was that you were concerned about the lack of standardisation, you thought the operational test was a good thing and that you would be looking into it to strengthen it. Dr Manderson did make some comments then about some of these gaps as to hows and whys. But what this FOI document shows is that not long after the previous Director of Aviation Safety departed, uh, the AVMED area of CASA under the Deputy had a working group uh, and it went for one month in October 2021 and came up with this discussion brief which basically says the whole concept of an operational test, removing restrictions, is not valid. They don't agree with it from a medical perspective. It should be removed. Pilots, yeah. Four Senator. pages of quite significant rebuttal highlighting all the things that have started to unfold and yet you're trying to tell the committee that you had no idea that this brief had been written by AVMED. Sorry, Senator, I probably wouldn't have seen. I, I, I genuinely can't recall the brief that you're talking about. Um, but I can say is what the evidence that's been presented to the committee that we've discussed with the CVDA pilots and that we briefed you on separately is correct. We don't intentionally mislead this committee. We take our responsibilities very seriously. We had genuine concerns based on the responses that we were provided from the tests that had been taken, whether it was the right path to do a follow-up review. I Genuinely, on hindsight's a wonderful thing. I'm, I'm not 100 per cent sure that it was, but we are where we are, and we're trying to formalise arrangements that haven't been formalised previously in a way that provides sufficient justification for Australia to differentiate itself so significantly from the vast majority of states who are a member of the International Civil Aviation Organisation. Okay. So how many differences do we file with ICAO at the we, moment? We, we file many differences with ICAO, but we always back it up with evidence, and that's what we're trying to do at the moment. Sure. So my concern is the people who are pushing for this change, who wrote this brief, include in it paragraphs that say, and I'm quoting here, there is an assumption following a pass on the OCVA that the absence of air incidents has been an indication that colour vision endorsements are unnecessary, rather than the alternate assumption that the paucity of air incidents to date is due to the application of appropriate colour vision controls by the way of certain conditions on medical certificates. Senator, all I can say is this does bring up very strong feelings from different members of the medical community. We are trying to work our way through this methodically so that we can document 
an outcome which, as I said, is replicable and allows for both the clinical sure. tests and an operational test that can be repeated. This is, this is where we want to get to and then form that, uh, ensure that that's formally um, captured through appropriate regulatory sure. structures. Mr. Spence, if I could just point out the um, logic fault in this, in that the position Australia adopted in February 2020 was aligned with the FAA and with the New Zealand uh, Authority. Do you know how many pilots there are in America, licensed pilots? Flying? Senator, Senator, the issue, I mean, we've got two issues. No, Ms. Spence, sorry, I'm asking you a question. No, I don't, Senator. Okay, it's around 620,000, about 110,000 commercial pilots. They've had the system operating for a number of years with no incidents, and yet the assertion here is that because Australia has done this for a couple of years without incident, that we must be on the wrong path and yet the US has been doing it for years. So I'm just saying that the whole premise behind and, this paper and, and Senator, is on flawed logic. And Senator, that paper is not the basis on which we are going forward. The issue that we raised, which we've briefed you on separately, was the issues that we had with the operationalisation of the OCVA and what we're trying to do to address that. So I might refer to my colleague. Uh, Senator, if I could just say one, one of the things that we've really um, taken very seriously is the, the instability and the uncertainty about how this issue has been treated. So to avoid the situation that you're recounting where changes were made um, from different areas perhaps in an unstructured way, what we're proposing to do is settle um, the policy forward through a regulatory process that, that actually puts a position out for consultation over the next probably six weeks. Um, and we create a legislative instrument that captures how we treat colour vision in a way that's transparent and open, subject to review and scrutiny, so that we don't end up in the situation that you're talking about where people have instability and uncertainty. So I think, as Ms Spence said, we, we're, that, the, the paper you've got in front of you is not Cass's position. That's an internal discussion paper that some uh, members of our um, medical community might have had, but we're taking it forward from a whole CASA mm. perspective that includes input from our operational areas, our flying standards areas and our medical areas, and we intend mm. to consult sure. um, publicly to create um, so stability. I'm, I'm pleased yeah. to hear that, but this may have only been a discussion paper, but it did start uh, until yep. October last year to have material impact on pilots and their professions and their ability to operate because it was starting to be operationalised clearly without an internal review and approval and, process. And we're, and we're addressing that now, Senator. Okay. Can we just come back then? Um, I accept what you're saying and I welcome that, a, a good strong process. But can we go back to the basis of principle? The whole discussion started with the fact that you believed that the operational test was a valid way to move forward as a third level of testing and both yourself, I believe, and Dr Manderson made the comment that should a pilot pass that operational test um, without any issues, they would be issued an aviation medical certificate without condition, note, restriction, endorsement, etc. Is that still your principled position? that you are seeking to find the evidence to work towards? We're working our way through that and will be the basis for a discussion paper, as Mr Marcelli has mentioned before. So, you know, there is that, that is the intention. Um, I don't think we've moved away from that, but we just need to make sure that we can actually turn the principle into a um, deliverable outcome. If you decide you can't, you've highlighted in the evidence you've provided that there's been close dialogue with both the New Zealanders and the FAA. Yeah. Have they indicated that they will change their position if you don't believe that you can reach that point? Um, I think our issue is more around how we come up with a, a repeatable test, but at this stage we haven't had any conversations with the FAA or New Zealand to suggest that they would move away from their positions. But Again, we can take on notice if, they have, if there has been any feedback along those lines. So if, they, if you don't believe you can come up with a repeatable operational test that satisfies your safety requirements, does that mean there'll be a flow and impact where you will stop any pilots that are licensed by the You're FAA? asking us to, hypo uh, to um, be, make, make asses assessments about something that hasn't actually happened yet, so I'd rather let us, let us get through the process we're working through before we guess what happens after that. It is that. the logical extension of your argument, I'm, though. I'm talking about what we're actually going to be consulting on if that, 
if as a result of the consultation we find ourselves unable to progress the way that we've been discussing, then we will be open and transparent about what our next steps are. But I can't um, talk, I, I don't know what other countries will do in response to anything mm -hmm. that we do either. Sure. Um, just in terms of the third level of testing, um, my understanding is that the FOI Department of CASA has confirmed that there is no documentation that approves or justifies the use of the CAD uh, as a third level of test. Yes, Senator, so uh, we've been going through this in some detail since we last appeared before the committee and since we met with you. Mm -hmm. And the, the CAD test has been used by CASA from about, around about the 2014 mark. Um, in our review, we haven't been able to identify clear evidence for how that test was deemed to be a test. So um, that's part of the, the process that we're working through now. So, so that has it now been suspended? Uh, so it, it has been... Um, well, let me wind back a bit. So the way the, regula the regulations work for colour vision is they prescribe two clinical tests, mm -hmm. and if you don't pass the two clinical tests, there can be a third test that CASA determines. So it's that determination that we um, haven't been able to identify clear evidence for. There is a separate part of the regulations that say CASA can apply any test um, to inform flexible um, certification. So we are using the CAD test to inform flexible decisions um, for people that are presenting right now, but we're not treating that test right now as a, as a test. Given uh, there's no... The sorry, 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 I'm not going to stop you. Mm. I know the rules. Okay. We do have an arrangement with the committee that we're sure. going to get through everyone. I can't two, two stop more, you. Two but, more questions. Um, thank you. We are finishing at 11. Okay. Sure. Given that in the AAT hearing for one pilot, the designer of the CAD test gave evidence in that hearing that it was never intended to be an operational test. In fact, he failed to see how it could be used as such. It's met stiff opposition from the pilot community that is subject to it. And now you have no um, documented evidence for its use. Why are you continuing to use that test and yet you have suspended the OCVA, which like-minded nations such as New Zealand and the United States use very similar form tests yep. as valid operational third level testing. So can Why the difference? Just to clarify, we have actually undertaken a test since all of this happened. So to suggest that we've suspended and putting making impossible for people and forcing people down CAD is incorrect. Um, but the whole point that we're talking about is the consultation is to go out engage with the pilot community around the CAD as well as an operational test along the lines of OCVA. Um, and from that we can work out what the pathway forward, and it may include two, th two third-tier tests as part of the um, colour vision deficiency process, but we'll work our way through that. And obviously we'll invite the um, CVD8 um, pilots to provide any feedback that they wish to around all options that are on the table. Well, to keep faith just on the chair, the, this will be my last question then. So, sorry, um, Senator, just really briefly, the, the yes. CAD test is a test that's accepted by the UK and adopted by the UK, so just as other jurisdictions mm -hmm. have operational tests, that, that's the basis for our use of the CAD test, is the UK experience. Well, so, then, there, then there are two that accept the OCVA, so why correct. aren't we accepting so, so that? Yeah. Your, your logic fails there, I'm afraid. Well, um, the OCVA, just sorry, Senator, just to be clear, what we've said, our biggest issue with the OCVA was not the test per se, it was the way in which it was actually being um, run through. And I appreciate your point around the guidance that had been offered to us, but that's part of the issue that we're trying to work our way through. Sure. Um, so my last question then is, can you please provide on notice um, details of your progression through leading to your uh, legislative instrument so that industry will have some understanding of the sort of time frame we're talking about, given that this was supposed to be resolved last year and we're now pushing into 2024. Yeah. Thank you, Chair, and thank, thank you, you very much. much. And I do appreciate the work that you are doing towards resolving this.